Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Ken Raggio Live. Thank you for joining me. This is another Prophecy News Break for Tuesday, December the 8th of the year 2020, your perfect vision. Appreciate you joining me tonight. I hope you will like this post and uh, make a comment. Let me know you're there. Tell me where you're coming from also. Please share this with your friends. And if you watch me on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just press the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notices. Also follow me on all mother networks. My subject, how China fits the Armageddon puzzle. Let me say that again. How China, have you heard about China in the news lately? I want to answer this question. How does China fit into the Armageddon puzzle? And it does. I think you're going to be interested in hearing this tonight. So stay with me for, for a little while. This not be a long program. The uh, subject I'm talking about comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 16. And uh, just to bring you up to speed very quickly, I will tell you that we are living in the last days. We're expecting Jesus Christ to return in our lifetimes. We believe that he is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the God of all flesh. He is God manifest in the flesh, and he's going to come back. And the Bible teaches us that he's going to rule the world for a thousand years before heaven and earth passes away and we go to the eternal city of heaven. So we are always watching the prophecy events as they take place. That's one of the reasons why I get involved uh, with politics, because politics defines how the world runs. And if God is not in our politics, then an atheist world is just going to be horrific. And I believe it's important for us to know and understand what's happening on the political scene, the geopolitical scene. It's, it's important for us to know what's happening in the world, spiritually, physically, financially, economically, politically, all of these things are because there's so many of those things that believe it or not, they fit the description of all these ancient Bible prophecies. And so in order for you to understand the Bible and the prophecies of the Bible, you have to be aware of, of world events. If, and people that don't know world events can't appreciate Bible prophecies. And so I've, made, I've dedicated myself more and more to educate people, not only on what the scriptures teach, but to educate them somewhat on the uh, current events so that when these events are taking place, people will recognize this is a prophetic event. And I want them not to just sense uh, at, at a distance that it's prophetic, but I want them to be able to tie these into biblical scriptures. And that's what I want to talk about here today, because uh, the Bible tells us in the ninth chapter of Daniel that there's going to be seven years of prophecy that's going to be fulfilled immediately before the end of this age. And, and when I say the end of the age, I'm talking about the end of what the Bible calls the age of the Gentiles. And when we go back into the thousand year kingdom of Christ, now we've had, we've had about 6,000 years of human history so far, and we're going to have a thousand years under Jesus Christ, according to the Bible prophecies. So uh, you remember how Peter said the day with the Lord is as a thousand years and the thousand years is as a day. So it, it, there's a correlation there. <clears throat> These 6,000 years of human history correlates to the six days of creation. And that last thousand years of Jesus rule and reign correlates with the seventh day in which God rested. So that millennial kingdom is the, is tantamount to the great Sabbath of God. It's the thousand years where Jesus Christ is going to rule in this world. And there's so many things taught if you read the book of Ezekiel from chapter 40 to 45, you'll see just hundreds of prophecies that have to do with that last thousand year period. Uh, the book of Isaiah covers that. In fact, the 11th chapter of Isaiah, if you start about the 11th verse and go down to the end of the chapter, most of the 11th chapter, uh, the last half of, of the 11th chapter of uh, is Isaiah talks about the millennial kingdom of Christ. And so we're headed that direction. We're going to be there before long. And, and, and for most of us, well, I don't know how many of us, a lot of us are going to be alive when all this happens. And the only caveat I have to that is uh, I don't have any idea how many of us are going to die in the great tribulation, but I know some of us will, and some of us won't. Not, not all the saints will die in the tribulation because the apostle Paul said, we which are alive and remain should be called up to meet him in the air. So there are going to be living saints. Not every single saint is appointed to die. Some will be, and some won't. Only God knows that algorithm to that equation who's who's appointed to death and who's not and i i've just made up my mind live or die my i belong to the lord so if if god sees fit to to 
keep me surviving through that last three and a half years of great tribulation, then I hope to bless him and live for him faithful. And if, if he chooses to allow me to suffer as a martyr, then I want to die in the faith, giving glory to God. But nevertheless, those last seven years are, are, are very nearly upon us. And we know that according to the 27th verse of 927 Daniel, uh, the Prince of Rome is going to commit, uh, is going to confirm a covenant with many for one week, which is a, is a period of seven prophetic years. It's a prophetic week of seven years. And we're, we're on the verge of that last seven years. We're waiting on the Pope to throw down on some kind of a, a global treaty that who knows, it may involve Israel. It may not. I don't know. The Bible does not give us details about what that covenant really is. There's, there's almost no deep, about all we know of it is the Prince of Rome is going to sign it, which that speaks of the Pope. And we also know that it's going to be for seven years. That's, that's the only two real hard clues we have about what that covenant is all about, but it's going to happen here pretty soon. And then we also know that the third temple in Israel is going to be built and uh, uh, dedicated. And there's going to be offering sacrifices and oblation in there until this Assyrian man of sin comes in in the middle of that seven years at the three and a half year point, the 42 month point, and he's going to commit the abomination that leaves it desolate. He's going to drive the Jews out of their new temple. And at that same time, Jesus said, Jerusalem is going to be encompassed with army. And when you see that, you know, the desolation of Jerusalem is nice. So we know that Jerusalem is going to be laid desolate for 42 months. Zechariah 13 and 14 tells us that before Armageddon, two thirds of Israel is going to die and one third of them are going to be tried in the fire like gold and silver tried in the fire. So we're, we're looking for all these things to happen. And then, uh, we know that in the great tribulation, there's going to be a great, great global war. It's going to break out on the Euph river Euphrates. And that's in the ninth chapter of the book of revelation. You, you see four spirits that blow on the whole earth. Uh, you, we see them in the second verse of Daniel chapter seven. We see them in Zechariah chapter six. We see they're, they're called four horsemen or white horse, red horse, black horse, and green horse. We see those four horsemen again in Revelation chapter six, a, a white horse, a red horse, a black horse, and a green horse. And these are the four great spirits of the last days. And that is Catholicism, the white horse, the, the red horse of communism, the black horse of capitalism, and the green horse of Islam. These are the four prevailing spirits on the world today. And they are the patrolling spirits. They have great, great, vast power and control in our world today. And you can see that. You don't, you don't have to be supremely educated to be able to observe the simple fact that the great spirits in the world today, religious-wise, are Catholicism and Islam, and politically, it's communism and capitalism. And the prophecies tell us that. 2,000 years before they came to be as they are today. And so these are amazing prophecies. And during that last 42 months of great tribulation, there's go those four spirits are going to be loose to make a great war, to hurt the earth and the sea. And John said in Revelation 9 that one-third of mankind is going to die in that great war. It's going to be the white horse, the black horse, the red horse, and the green horse. Are gonna, a war is going to break out that's going to kill one-third of mankind. And as soon as that's over, there's going to be a war that's going to bear down on Israel itself. All the powers of the world, all the powers of the world are going to come on Israel to meet Jesus Christ when he comes back at the battle of Armageddon. And you have to understand that there's those seven trumpets we've already, and I don't want to teach all this in this lesson, but there's five trumpets that have already sounded. They begin to be sounded about the time of World War II, and we've already heard five of those trumpets sound. If you want to understand those, go back and look at my previous videos. You'll find a lot of teaching on that subject. We are waiting on the sixth trumpet, which will take place during those 42 months of great tribulation. And then the seventh trump is the last trump at which the dead in Christ will rise and we which are alive and remain shall be called up to meet him in the air. So you can't have the last trump till you get the sixth trump. Jesus is not going to come back before the sixth trump because if he did, then it wouldn't be the last trump. The sixth trump comes before the seventh trump, and the seventh trump is when Jesus will come back and the dead in Christ will rise and we which are alive and remain to be called, called to meet him. So you have seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven vials of the wrath of God. Now, the seven vials are, are the wrath of God that's going to be poured out on the people that have the mark of the beast during the great tribulation. And that's what 
the Bible's talking about when it says we are not appointed of the wrath of God. The saints of God are not appointed to the punishments that are designated for those who take the mark of the beast. If you look at those seven vials, they're in the 15th and 16th chapter of the book of Revelation, and you'll see the first vial of God's wrath is poured out on everybody that has the mark of the beast. And the Bible said they had sores that broke out. It's, a, it's like a pox that's going to break out on everybody that takes the mark of the beast. The second vial of God's wrath is that the seas are going to turn to blood. The third vial of God's wrath is that the rivers are going to turn to blood. The fourth vial of God's wrath is that there's going to be darkness on what the Bible calls the seat of the beast. That's going to be the headquarters of this Assyrian man of sin. So wherever he's at, the Bible declares there's going to be great darkness that's going to fall on them. And then the sixth vial, listen, this, listen very carefully, because my subject today is how China fits in to the Armageddon puzzle. Now, on previous videos, I've I've talked about how that, that sixth trumpet war was going to break out. It was going to include Russia. It's going, to, it's going to have a Catholic influence behind the scenes working there. We're going to see Russia and Turkey and Iran and uh, Saudi Arabia are all going to be involved at the, at the Battle of Armageddon. But at the, at the sixth trumpet, we're going to see those four horsemen, which is Catholicism, all the West under that black horseman, all of communism under the red horseman and all of Islam under the green horse. And they're going to be probably Turkey and Iran. A lot of these Muslim nations, Saudi Arabia, the United States, Russia, China are very likely to be present at that sixth trumpet war. I'm not so sure that China will be involved in the sixth trumpet war, but it could be. But what we do know, and this is where I'm, but this is where I'm headed, and I'm not going to make this a long program. I just want to show you how China fits into that Armageddon puzzle. And it's in the 16th chapter of Revelation, and it is about the sixth vial of the wrath of God. Now, incidentally, the seventh, the seventh vial of God's wrath is the fall of Mystery Babylon. That's when the Roman Catholic Church in the city of Rome is going to be destroyed. Now, don't believe these pope people that tell you that Mystery Babylon is New York or Wall Street or United States or Washington, D.C. or America. That's not Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon has got a, a golden cup with blood in it of the martyrs. That's the Roman Catholic Church. That Mystery Babylon is dressed in, in scarlet and purple. That's not New York. That's Rome. It's got, it's got, it's decked with gold and pearls and all this stuff. That's not New York. That's Rome. I mean, there's 17 clues in the prophecies that tells us who Mystery Babylon is, and every single one of them applies to the Roman Catholic Church and the city of Rome. So Mystery Babylon is going to be destroyed in the seventh vial of God's wrath, and that's immediately, immediately before Jesus Christ comes at Armageddon. So Rome is going to be destroyed ex just before Jesus returns to Armageddon. In fact, the Pope is going to be in Jerusalem when that happens, and Jesus is going to meet the Pope and the Assyrian man of sin in Jerusalem when he comes back. But that sixth trumpet, listen to what it says. And I'm talking about how China fits in the Armageddon puzzle. The sixth angel poured out his vial on the great river Euphrates. <clears throat> now, this is, this is almost ironical because the sixth trumpet is a war on the river Euphrates, and the sixth vial is the Euphrates River being dried up to prepare the way for the kings of the east. So there is some suggestion at least that the sixth trumpet and the sixth vial run concurrently. It may be, maybe not, but at the very least we know that the kings of the east, say that, the kings of the east are going to come across the river Euphrates. That suggests to me that they may be, China may engage in that six trumpet war may not, but we do believe, I do believe that China and Iran will be engaged at the Battle of Armageddon and they will be coming across the Euphra Euphrates River to get there. Now, the, the million dollar question is now, is China really moving in that direction? Is there any reason to believe that China might actually become away? In fact, I better read that so you'll, you'll really know and understand uh, the details of that prophecy. He said, I saw, the sixth angel poured his vial on the great river Euphrates, and the waters thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Now, the 12th chapter of Revelation tells us specifically that the dragon is Satan and the devil. 
But it's, it's ironic to me that at this same point that it looks like China is going to be coming across the Euphrates, it's also, its symbol is also the dragon. Is it possible that the devil himself is going to manifest in China at that point and that the dragon is going to come across the Euphrates River? And he said the other spirits was out of the mouth. He said there's three spirits, the mouth of the dragon, the mouth of the beast, that's the Assyrian man of sin, that's probably somebody from Turkey, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, that's the pope of the Roman Catholic Church. So you got three spirits at the sixth vial of God's wrath, the spirit of the dragon, the spirit of the Assyrian, and the spirit of Rome, the pope. And these are working miracles. They are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. And then Jesus said, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Then the next verse says, And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Guys, that's the only time in the whole Bible the word, word Armageddon is ever used. The only time in the Bible the word Armageddon is used is when the Euphrates River dries up and the dragon comes across the river and the Assyrian comes across the river and the Pope comes across. I don't know, I don't know, they all, I don't know that the Pope and the Assyrian will come across the river, but obviously the kings of the east, and if you look east of the Euphrates, you're looking at Iran and China. Those are the geopolitical forces that threaten Israel to the east of the Euphrates. Anybody knows Iran is a, is a rabid enemy of Israel, and it looks like China is also going to get engaged in that battle. Obviously, if you know anything about China, then you know that they have uh, hege hegemonic, hegemonic desires for the whole world. China wants to rule the world. I mean, let me show you something very quickly. I don't want to take very long at this, but I want to uh, show you some stuff here that you need to see. Now, we're in this election crisis, and it's become apparent that China's been uh, working behind the scenes to control our politics here in this country, and we've got even connections that China has got connections to this election still. Here's an article that where Sidney Powell said we've been collecting the data and they've been stealing congressional seats for years. All these powers, Dominion, it looks like uh, some Chinese forces have actually bought a $400 million stake in that Dominion operation. So you got to understand that. Here's a here's a video from Turkel. Tucker Carlson, where he shows that uh, China is our biggest threat, not Russia. Let me listen. Let me get you to listen to this for one second. Many of the very people who ranted so hysterically about Russia were many of the very people who ranted so hysterically about Russia were, even as they were doing it, even as they were yelling about Vladimir Putin. In fact, they were doing precisely what they claimed to decry. They were working on behalf of a foreign power our chief global rival, the government of China. The Russia... So, there you have it. Tucker Carlson's exposing the fact that it wasn't Russia that was the great threat to America. It was China. Here is another video I want you to see, just a momentary clip. This is from Sky News in Australia. Australia is all up in arms right now because China is cracking down on Australia. Listen to this clip. But first, to the most important issue in Australia this week and potentially the most crucial global concern we are facing internationally as we head into 2021, the terrifying aggressiveness of the Chinese government. Now, that, that's an interesting video. You do good to look that up on YouTube and listen to it. Here's an article from Axios that came out, I think it was today. It says exclusive suspected Chinese spy targeted California politicians. I got to tell you, they're pulling back the curtain on the Wizard of Oz right now. We're finding out who's really running all this dirty politics. It seems apparent more and more by the day that people have been cheating our elections in this country for decades, and now we're finally discovering who it is, and they're uncovering case after case after case in California where the Chinese government has been involved doing dirty, dirty dealings with politicians from north to south in California. There is, uh, here, here's an article 
This says how pro-Beijing communists almost stole the election for Biden the old-fashioned way, and they connect the dots between China and all the ballot stuffing that we've seen. And here's another interesting video. I'm not going to play any of this, but look at this here. Dear Mr. President of the United States, here's a letter concerning the election fraud in South Korea. This is with utmost respect from Annie Chan, the chair of, the, uh, of this Korean uh, political action committee. She's saying, we, are, we knew back years ago how that we were being cheated in our elections by the very same processes that are right now cheating the United States elections. And, and, and folks, here's what I'm trying to tell you. We've got to go back and understand that China is a major player in this whole project. China is escalating its presence in the world stage right now. And I'm going to just wrap this up and tell you, we're getting so close to China wanting to take over the world. I mean, Z of China, he's been in power, I think, since uh, 2013, if I'm not mistaken. And Chinese is escalating, escalating, escalating in its attempt to take over the world. People are talking about all the shenanigans they're doing in Africa things they're doing in Australia. They don't want to be a fair player. They want to take over. They don't want to cooperate with anybody. They want to rule the world. They want to own the world. And that's what they're working toward. Now, in, in prophetic terms, they're never going to accomplish that. According to the prophecies of the Bible, China will never rule the world because the Bible prophecies tell us that at the Sixth Trumpet War, it's going to be the, the mouth of the lion, which is Britain. It's going to be the feet of the bear, which is Russia. It's going to be the four-headed leopard of Europe, the European Union, including France and Germany, and a, and a world government. That's who's going to be there at the, at the Battle of Armageddon. And, uh, and on the south, we're going to have the Western powers which includes the United States and uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Sheba and Dedan in the 38th chapter of Saudi Arabia at, at the Battle of Armageddon is modern, Sheba, is modern Saudi Arabia. And so all these powers, and, and, and so there's only one mention. None of these other prophecies mentioned or allude to China except that Euphrates prophecy. And the ninth chapter of Revelation in the Sixth Trumpet War does not specifically mention China, but the 16th chapter and the sixth vial of God's wrath does mention the kings of the East. And it appears to me that China is who that kings of the East prophecy is all about. And that's where I say that China fits into the Armageddon puzzle. So what does that mean for you and me? That means guys, we're, we're, we're on a fast moving escalator to the great and final battle of Armageddon. We're going to get there. I'm, I think I'm going to see it in my lifetime. I might be old by then. I'm pretty old right now, but I think I'm going to see it. I really do. Unless God chooses for me to die as a martyr through this whole thing. But I think I'll see, I think I'll see the Pope confirm the covenant. I think I'm going to see the Assyrian man of sin in the temple. I think I'm going to see the mark of the beast in my day. I really do. And I think I'm going to see the great tribulation. I believe I'm going to see the two witnesses in Israel. I believe I'm going to see the 144,000 Jews sealed and flee to a safe place. I believe I'm going to see all that great tribulation come to Israel. And I believe I'm going to see the sixth trumpet war. If I live through that, that far into the great tribulation, if I do. And that means if I live, I'm going to see China coming to join the battle of Armageddon. And at that point it's over because the next thing is God's going to throw down on the Pope, the Vatican, the city of Rome, Mystery Babylon is going to be destroyed. And then Im immediately, G the great earthquake is going to shake the whole earth, and Jesus is going to come. The trumpet's going to sound. The saints of God are going to rise up from their graves. We which are alive and remain are going to be called to meet him in the air. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. Mortal shall put on immortality. Corruptible is going to put on incorruptible. And beloved, we do not yet know what we shall be, but we know when we see him, we shall be as he is, for we shall see him in all his glory. We're going to be like Jesus Christ when that rapture takes place. We're going to be changed in the moment of a twinkle of an eye. I hope you're in that number. But you, if you want to be saved, don't presume upon it. Don't let somebody sell you this easy believism gospel said all you have to do is believe on Jesus and you're going to be saved. That's not true. You have to repent of your sins. If you've got unrepented sins in your life, you won't be in the rapture. If you, if you die with unrepented sins, you won't go to heaven. 
You got to repent. You got to put away your sins. They have to be under the blood of Jesus. And the only way to do that is to repent of your sins. Secondly, you ha- Jesus said, you have to be born again. If you're not born again, you cannot ever see the kingdom of God. If you're not born of the water and of the spirit, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said that. That's not my doctrine. That's the God of glory telling us that. You have to be born of the water. That means you need to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. For there is no other name given unto heaven among men whereby we must be saved. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, according to Acts 2.38. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And the, the gift of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost that you see in the book of Acts chapter 2, that early church when the on the day of Pentecost when the Spirit of God fell on them and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance to them. That is the spirit birth. The water birth is water baptism. The spirit birth is spirit baptism. Repentance, baptism, the Holy Ghost in filling. Those three things are essential to the new birth. And if you have not received the Holy Ghost, you are none of his. You have to have the spirit of God in you. You must be filled with the Holy Ghost because that's the spirit that's going to quicken you and give life to you when the trumpet sounds. And if you don't have that Holy Ghost, you're not going to be quickened when the rapture takes place. And so I preach to you today, repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus and receive the Holy Ghost and live a godly life until you hear that trumpet sound in Jesus' name. And that's my message to you today. Thank you for listening to me. I hope you'll stay with me in my future videos. Please come back, subscribe to me here on, uh, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got alternate channels I'm trying to build. Please, please, please follow me on Parlor. There's links below this video you can use. Go to Parlor, set up an account, and follow me on Parlor. Follow me on MeWe, M-E-W-E. Uh, download the apps to Parlor and MeWe. Gab, go to gab.com. They they're not allowed to have apps on I, on Apple or Androids, but it's because they don't believe in censorship of our kind. And so Gab is a really free speech place there. And I urge you to just go to gab.com. There's an app there on the website you can download to your phone and that'll help you out with this. Also videos. I've got two backup channels with videos, Vimeo and BitChute. Please, please follow me to these because I'm telling you, the day could very quickly come when you won't, you won't find Ken Radio any longer on Facebook. I don't know how long I'll last. I don't know how long I'll last on Facebook on uh, Twitter or YouTube. So please uh, join me on these other sites so we'll never lose touch with each other. Also, get these books. In case you lose me, you can read my books. These two books, My Daily Bible Companion is the Old Testament and New Testament lessons, lessons from every single chapter in the Bible from an apostolic Pentecostal perspective. You need them. Prayer, Prayer subjects, principles, people, places, and things. Virtues, values, and vices, and Bible prophecies from Genesis to Revelation. You need these two books. The book of Daniel, the Daniel prophecies, God's plan for the last days is over 700 pages and over 150 pictures and graphics and heavily footnoted all the way throughout that shows you exactly what the big picture of all the Bible prophecies tells us. You need to know that and understand that. A book called uh, Treasures of Darkness, How to See the Glory of God in the Darkest Trials of Your Life, a, a book called The Greatest Doctrines of the Bible, The New Birth and the Oneness of God, a, a book called Praying on Purpose, Praying for Results, How Men Prevail with God. You need all these books. You can get them all from Amazon wherever you live. If you want these books, if you live in the United States, I'll make you a special offer of all nine books for $125, and I pay the shipping, but that's only for those who live in the continent of the United States. So, uh, if you want that, check the link below for that special. Also, if you can donate to this effort and help me out, I would appreciate I thank you all, those of you, some of you who support me regularly, I thank God for you. I appreciate all your contributions from month to month. And if you can help me out, I would deeply appreciate that today. God bless you. There's a link below for donations. Also, share these videos far and wide. Please share them on your Facebook pages, on your other social media platforms, and help me to get this word out far and wide. And look for me each time, and I'll see you next time. God bless you. Good night.